Good morning, everyone. My name is Wang Kun Yi, and the honors project is entitled The Summer of Tosanos of Haydn and Mozart. This is the overview. Uh, my uh, PowerPoint is divided into five parts. The first one is the list of the repertoire. It follows by the structural junctures. Then it is the recapitulation procedures. After that, it will be followed by the suggestion on the bombing, and lastly, the, at the conclusions. Mm. Haydn's uh, piano sonata number 34 and Mozart's piano sonata and the F major uh, mainly focus today, especially the second and the third movement. Um, I will start with the structural conjunctions because um, in classical mu music, harmony and form are closely relative. The common practice is the modulation. Um, let me start with Haydn. His piano sonata shows the modulation in the third movement. Here is the example. It starts with the G major, as we can see in Ba 9. And uh, that is the basic idea in G major and modulates to the relative minor E minor at the end. So with the, it's with the perfect cadence. The vowel notes give strong direction to the cadence and when it's approaching cadence, the bass and the treble are also including the E notes that create very strong sense of the new key, E minor. This is another example of the modulation. In, at the end of the second movement, in bar 44, we can see it, it should be in the G major. And in, when uh, G major as the tonic chord, and it ends with the interrupted cadence with the sub submedian chord E minor in the bar 45. E minor is actually the tonic part of the E minor key. Then in the 40, bar 46 to 49, the prolongation of the dominant harmony of E minor is shown there, which is the B minor. Um, so uh, uh, it is the dominant chord um, at the end of the second movement, which is um, the um, imperfect cadence. Then uh, the first key and uh, the first measure of the third movement is the tonic chord, which is the E minor. So um, the, the, the end of the second movement is actually um, leading to the beginning of the third movement. So it, it shows the uh, dominance to tonic motion that could complete the modulation of the E minor key. And the structural junctures of Mozart is a different story. It has smooth harmonic progression. Um, it also has long range harmonic weight and including the unexpected harmony. Uh, which can produce the sudden change of the mood. Mm. Mozart's, uh, Mozart's third movement to shows the modulation. Mm. In bar 35, it is actually the um, um, perfect cadence of the first theme in, G, uh, in F major. Then, um, when it begins the um, transition in the bar 36, um, it starts with the D minor immediately. And the character is built over a few bars. Then um, in bar 40, it is the um, uh, perfect chord of tonic chord of D minor 
Meanwhile, it's also the second minor chord, uh, the, the minor chord of C major. So between bar 41 to 45, it's frequently with the dominant Teutonic motion that can erase the listener's memory of the last key. So it's um, ensuring the C major as the new key. The coming session will be the recapitulation procedures. Mozart usually um, um, use note to note uh, in his break uh, of the exposition in his recapitulation. He dramatizes the adjustment with these three methods. The first one is adding an expanded harmonies. Secondly, he can he also widely use the subdominant chord. Uh, lastly, it is, it is, he he used the chromatic harmony. This could be seen in third movement. Mm. Uh, let me go through with the the unexpected harmony first. In exposition. The transition starts in bar 36 um, with the descending harmony, as you see in the bar 36. But in the, the, the recapitulation, the listener also expect the same thing happen in the bar 169. However, um, most of us put a in Italian six part thing um, to dramatize the story. And um, actually the resolution of the Italian six is the dominant of the new key, which is the G major. So um, this is a this is a drama that created by Mozart. And um, he also uh, prepared this to the next modulation, which you can observe from uh, at, at the last bar I show here, because is the leading uh, the F sharp in the one hundred seventy two is um, the the F sharp here is actually leading to the G minor, which is the parallel minor in the coming bar in bar 173. And another two tools are widely used by Mozart. They are subdominant chord and the uh, chromatic harmonies. Mm, the recapitulation could have been finished in um, the bar 225 because um, it's arriving the F major key which is the home key already with the perfect cadence. It's also happened the same in, in exposition before. But um, most of uh, adds the short coda to, um, to make it more interesting. Um, he prepared for the fourth chord in the um, bar 227, which is the subdominant chord. And as you can observe from the bass line, starting from the coda, the bass is uh, having the chromatic ascending letter. So it leads to the sound of uh, getting far away from the tonic. But, um, and, and we can see that the here is um, the fourth chord is actually leading to the uh, next full diminished seventh chord of F major, which is even further away. So um, this is a very uh, uh, most of create the drama here, and then um, followed by that with the with the home key F major with. Um, quiet dynamic, which is bringing 
bringing the listeners back to the home key. So um, Mozart keeps the deflection into smooth flow, fits in his large structure. Um, the following part will be the suggestion on the performance of these repertoires. Let me start with Mozart at Heidelberg's Sonata number 34, slow movement. Mm, it should be performed with a, a flexible tempo. Uh, so it means uh, the performer can do with a um, rebuttal and accelerated tempo uh, whenever the mood changing. Uh, the character could be peaceful and anxious according to the, um, the um, rapid running notes or the peaceful home key. Mm. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, the connection between second movement and third movement are um, very strong, especially the, um, the chord progression of blinking together at the end of the second movement to the tonality of the next movement, the naughty. So um, the beat should be counted correctly at the end of the second movement so that the listener can have, um, get the sense of concluding the wrong one. Um, the frenati of this repertoire should be played with the clear touching, a clean touching. So um, fingertips is very strongly recommended. And um, with them, an articulation should be cautious as the basic idea is the um, uh, upbeat quaver notes then follow with the uh, uh, long downbeat so it this the upbeat quaver should be played lightly and shortly so that it leads to the downbeat then listener to get the top tapping and lightly move by this rhythm. And the melody even is in the minor key, but it should be played with the loop of innocence or the athlete. The LBT bass should be uh, in the graceless style. Um, on the other hand, the um, uh, Sonata in F major, but written by Mozart, has different way to, to perform. The, in, in, for the slow movement, uh, it should be in singing style. And the um, uh, directional four bar phrasing should be uh, performed by the, by the performer uh, with the cloudy bass. The last movement should be put, uh, played in spirited uh, character. The compelling rhythmic swing should be played with the lighter top notes. Um, and um, when, whenever the section has changed, the dynamic and the character should be changed sharply. And um, the directional harmonic progression to be produced by the by the performer uh, according to the the surprising uh, surprised harmon harmonies so a uh, fuller sound should be performed by the performer to dramatize the story mm. This is the conclusion um, of the different character of Haydn and Mozart's piano sonata. Haydn uh, is more likely to focus on the local harmonic events. He has strong polarity um, on his piece. And he tried to remain the whole piece in monochromatic um, 
way in his composition. Mm. And alternatively, Mozart has a long range harmonic uh, resolution, which is in a large, large scale and operatic style. Mm. He has already used the uh, unexpected harmonies to get up attention. It, um, used a smoother treatment in uh, connecting the juncture. That's the end of my lecture. Thank you.